every Thursday, we do showcase um, one profession that we try and get, um, you know, for you, our viewers, to, uh, to appreciate more what it is that people do you know, to impact society, to impact the country, to impact our economy, and so on and so forth. So today, we also have um, one profession for you, an engineer. Not just an engineer, but a subsea engineer. We'll find out from her what it means. Ama Nima Nyama, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Okay, so who is a subsea installation engineer? What's that all about? Right, so... Um, I like to use a lot of illustrations yes, go ahead. Um, just to make it more um, appealing to the average person. So we all know that Ghana has oil, and we know that oil is buried somewhere deep, deep, deep in the sea. Okay, so once you hit the seabed, the oil is underneath the seabed, mm. and it has to come up for us to, to make use of it. So you have various components and equipment that are laid on the seabed to enable us to have access to the oil that is buried beneath the seabed. Okay. Okay. Now, the role of the subsea engineer is to facilitate the design, the fabrication, the installation, um, and the operation of such equipment. Hmm so that we can have the, the oil come upstream. So that's, that's basically what we do. Um, what sparked your interest in, in this space? Because most of us want to be on dry land, not <laughs> underneath the sea. Um, so I guess I started from the mainstream traditional um, engineering fields. So looking at mechanical, civil, that's that's where the interest started from. So just a general interest in engineering, anything practical, um, understanding how things work. Then I went on to do um, a bachelor's in materials engineering at KNUSC. So that's what I read. Subsequent to that, that's when the journey with um, subsea engineering started. So... I have had the opportunity to work with um, GNPC and currently on second men to GNPC Technique, um, who specialize in um, subsea engineering mm -hmm. currently uh, in the country. So that's where the interest um, really peaked. And but what was your first experience like in that space? Um, a lot of nervousness. Okay. Um, and then a lot of excitement. So it was a mixture of the two okay. because there's the fear of the unknown because it's a new, it's a new area yeah. um, for, for Ghana, first of all, in an era where we've just discovered oil. Mm. I mean, at the time, mm -hmm. because I've been doing this for um, a bit, <laughs> I'm, not <Sure>. too, <laughs> I'm not too experienced, but I think I've done it for a little while to know my way around. Mm -hmm. So at the time, we had just discovered oil. You're a young graduate. You've entered the field. So the normal jitters mm -hmm. that come with um, being in an engineering work environment and then the excitement that comes with having to work on new things, that's, that, that was the, the blend for me. I, I, I'm, I'm curious about, um, let's go back a little bit further sure. and say uh, you're in school and you're studying engineering. Now, I know for a fact that in the class of engineering, maybe not many women will be there. How, what was that experience like? And then how do you then transition? And how does, it, how does that prepare you also for a working life where there's, you're just one of a few women, you know, who are in that space where just all men? Right. I... I happened to be in a class of 36. Out of the 36, there were three females. Hmm. Wow. Yes. So that's, I think <laughs> that yeah. paints the picture um, very vividly. That was the space that I entered. But you have to brace yourself because it's a decision you have made hmm. to 
um, embark on such a journey, so to speak. So the passion, the drive, everything about what sparked your interest, you are going to need to take all of that with you and make it count. That, that's, my, that's my goal by even mm. till today because in the industry, we are still very few females. Um, and you, you don't want to make it a pity party. Mm. You, you don't want to be favored just because you're a woman yeah, in a male-dominated yeah. environment. You want to be relevant. You want to square up with the males and even be better. And so it's a conscious effort um, every day going about your, your activities, whatever deliverables you have to um, give to your superiors or the projects, you make sure that it's top notch. Hmm. What's so, your average day like? Well, it, it depends on it depends on what aspect of the the, the project we're working on. Okay. So I'll give you the two very um, let's say distinct um, scenarios. So the first scenario is currently what um, I'm doing, let's say as recent as yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I would be in, in the office. I currently um, work on installation analysis scopes. So that involves a lot of calculations, um, preparing simulations. Supposing we have to embark on um, an operation offshore where you're going to do an installation for a jumper or and I'm using a lot of technical terms, technical please. jargon. So use I'll use have terms to break, we can all understand. Yes, I have to break them down. <laughs> but you're going to install a piece of equipment. Okay. Basically, I'll perform calculations to make sure that the operation is feasible. Okay. And in what kind of um, cases we can install um such equipment. So when you say calculations, what do you mean? Like the numbers, the size, what, what, what everything. Okay. So geometry from geometry to very technical inputs. Okay. All of the input data, um, the environment, you have to take data from the environment, which we call metal shin data. Okay. So you are looking at the waves, um, if current has to be considered, if you are looking at wind factors. You have to take all of that into consideration in your calculation and validate um, the, the philosophy that you have um, conceptualized. And it has to be precise. It has to be precise. Okay. So subsequent to that, then um, you put out a report stating your findings and then um, it's cascaded to the right quarters. Hmm. Now, this document will be used um, as a go-by offshore, so to, as a reference for operations. Wow. Yes. So if someone gets a calculation wrong, what could happen? There are What's dire the worst stories you've, you've heard? There are dire consequences. Can you um, share some with us? We haven't had, fortunately for me, <laughs> we haven't had um, any <laughs> of those scenarios. <laughs> Precisely, that's what I'm sitting here. <laughs> uh, but we haven't had any any such cases on on our side okay. um, as a company, so that's good mm -hmm. because there are lots of checks and balances in place. If you miss it, somebody is going to um, call it out, okay. and then you can revise the calculations. Okay. But it's your responsibility as um, an installation analysis engineer to make sure your calculations right from the onset are, are precise and yes. Then there's a second scenario where you're a project engineer offshore. So a typical day for me offshore would be um, waking up on the waters. So you're in some remote location in the middle of <laughs> the ocean, literally, um, on a boat that is rocking. Um, <laughs> and yeah, 
was... It's like the way we see it in the movies where the sun is up and you're just feeling the air <laughs> and you, you're hearing the waves. Or is it more like, listen, all right, <laughs> it's enough. No, it's, it is quite, it can be quite serene as, as the movies portray it. Okay. If you're a nature person, then you would appreciate the sunrises and the sunsets and all of that. Um, the other side is once that, that lasts for maybe 30 minutes yeah. <laughs> tops and then it's go. Right. So you have to go to the office which is on the vessel, wow. and then um, do a handover with um, your your colleague, project engineer. They would hand over. So that's whatever. a shift that was working before Precisely. you. Precisely. Okay. And then you have um, a discussion on what has transpired in your absence. Then you can now take over, um, supervise the operation as required, make inputs and then ensure that the operation um, goes on successfully. What has, been, what, what has been your most scary day at work? Wow. When, when I'm not able to crack um, a problem, hmm. because you work with simulation softwares, so once <laughs> you're trying to um, present a calculation in the most realistic way. Essentially, the, the simulation is trying to represent what would happen offshore. Mm. If anything should go wrong in that simulation model, it's, I mean, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the model doesn't solve and it's giving you errors and you have to debug it. Now, when you're not able to debug it, it can give you nightmares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and these things are time related, right? Yes, yeah, they're time bound. So it means that you're under pressure when, you're not, when it's not being solved, you're under pressure now because time is running out and Precisely. you need to fix it. What's the longest time you spent on an equation? Ooh. Longest is, is relative. Longest is relative because every every scenario is unique. Mm -hmm. um, every project is unique, but it can take from anywhere from a day to weeks. Weeks. Yeah. And it, has there ever been a point where you were like, listen, okay, maybe I should just go find a regular job and not be <laughs> stuck with these numbers? <laughs> Have you ever had such a scenario? I, it, it, for me, it's, it's never gotten to the point where I want to go for a regular job. I don't think I would survive in that space because Most people I like won't survive in your space, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I, I hear that a lot, actually. I get that a lot. But I think I like the challenge. No, let me correct that. I don't think. I do love the challenge. Um, I enjoy it. It's, it's, it's stimulating. That's, that's the best part of what I do. It's stimulating. It, it makes you think outside the box. So for me, that's, that's basically um, what keeps me going. Super. So um, <clears throat> as a, <laughs> you know, you're out at sea, Atlantic Ocean. Have you done other oceans before, outside, outside the Atlantic? No. No, okay. So Atlantic Ocean is one of the most boisterous oceans. Yes. Okay. Have you ever had a situation where you're thinking to yourself, this ship, something's going to happen. Something's definitely going to happen. That's, you know, maybe I should be on land right now. Have you ever had that experience? And if you can share that with us. Um, I, I, I don't think I've, I've gotten to the point where I'm so scared. I say, okay, I need to ditch this ship right now. Because usually you are so far out um, you can't see land. Mm. You are kilometers <laughs> away from shore. So where these operations take place, um, we are working anywhere between 900 to um, 2,000 meters water depth. So it is nowhere near the shore. Wow. Precisely. Wow. So 
um, all you're going to see around, the best you're going to see is other vessels and then the FPSOs around. So really, if you ditched the ship, um, there's <laughs> nowhere to go. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't think my rational mind has ever come to that point. But I do recall being on a vessel which was quite, um, it, it's a smaller vessel. And so it tends to roll a lot more. You know, the bigger the vessel, the, the better your chances of stability on sea. But then when it's smaller, mm. then you have a lot of rolling yeah. occurring. So that, that has been my worst okay, experience. Okay, so can you talk us through what we're seeing here? Uh, what, so is this is a typical, what's, what yes. is this? So, so this is a typical vessel. Mm. And I used a term earlier called the jumper. Yeah. So that metal bar that is going to be lifted is what's called the jumper. Okay. Now it's supposed to connect two subsea structures. Okay. We'll see that sometime um, later. But basically, it's being deployed. So what is it doing now? It's dropping something into the water. Yes. So there's a crane that uh -huh. lifted it off. Yeah. So the crane has the arm. Okay. It booms up and down. Okay. And then it can um, move the structure. Okay. So that structure in the water there, that's what you call the jumper? Yes. Okay. The, the one with the yellow With the yellow ends. things on the side. Yes. Okay. Now, what just went close to that structure mm. is called the ROV. It's a remotely operated vehicle. Okay. It's, it's the coolest um, thing you'd ever find offshore. Really? It's, it's a robot, basically. Uh, I mean, I like to call it a robot because it has arms. Okay. That, that can do um, things that a diver should be able to do oh, so okay. they are called manipulators so that you don't need to you need to sense a human being down there you just sit in the comfort of the ship and then operate it from there yes at such water depths it's it's um fatal to send a human being because oh, of wow. the pressures okay ah. they would literally burst open hmm. wow i see so it's it can take what's going hours. on on the left now so that's it's showing you the interior of the crane Okay. And the crane has a compensation system to compensate the up and down motion. Mm -hmm. It's the heave motion. It's basically up and down. Now, remember I mentioned that you're looking at two structures being connected by the jumper. And so that yellow structure mm -hmm. has now connected um, the structure on the left okay. and the structure on the right. Now, okay. what you have on the left is what we call um, the vertical tree. But, the vertical um, what? A vertical tree. So it's okay, a vertical, vertical subsea. Mm. Yes. So it's a vertical um, connection system. And we like to call it a Christmas tree. Mm. What advice would you give parents and uh, young girls watching us about STEM and, and you know, because you're here, you, you didn't come here with a suitcase, you look normal. <laughs> How important is it for more people who, like you to get in these spaces and also come out to share their stories so young girls will be inspired? Over, over the past couple of days, in the spirit of International Women's Day, I've, I've had to ponder um, the, the need to bridge a gap that still exists because even though we've made a lot of strides in trying to conscientize everyone about women and the need to bring women at par and um, no malice intended but um, and, and no feminine Feminism. Don't be apologetic about your delivery. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> no, I, 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 and I'm being very careful with that. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to project the feminist side of it. But basically, we just want women to be able to venture into such spaces, into engineering, into hardcore subsea engineering. It is so important for 
girls to appreciate the fact that they can do it and it's within their reach. You, you are more than able and more than capable of squaring up mm -hmm. and delivering just as much as a man would. Fantastic. I, currently, there's, there's still that gap yeah. within the industry and women have to put in a lot more effort to be relevant, to be recognized. And it's a new, it's a new and developing area, even in Ghana. So the industry is still young and more opportunities need to be created. As opportunities are created, women have to be encouraged and supported. We need to reach, reach out and send the message across. It's not just the traditional um, mechanical engineering or civil engineering. There are areas like this. You find university students come out of school and they haven't heard about such areas mm. before, but they are, they, they are there. And we're glad you exist so that they know that it's possible. Yeah. Thank you so much sharing your story with us. And we Thank hope you'll come you. back again beyond Women's Month to share more of your developments with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank and then you are so home for staying for Breakfast Daily. My name is Jifa Eke Amatama. And I'm David Kwekusichi. And that was Ama Enima Nyama. Where do we follow you on social media, by the way? So I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm mentioning that first. Such an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> What's your IG name, Ama? <laughs> So my IG, my IG name is Eve Lemond. Eve Lemond. Um, thank yes. you. <laughs> thank you very much. I can find her thank on you. LinkedIn. Ama Enima Nyama. And Don't Facebook go anywhere. Yes, Facebook and every place else. News reviews next. Yes. We'll be right back. We'll be back. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share with all of your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City Team. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.